Okay, and to round us out this evening, because it's been a phenomenal evening of stories, we have Nathan Lewis. All right, everybody, before I get started, just real quick, if you've heard anything here tonight from any of these storytellers that sounds like your own life, can I get an oh, yeah? Oh yeah. oh yeah. All right, all right. That's good. That means everybody here has something in common with everybody else. I didn't plan to tell this story tonight. So we're gonna see how this goes. I was a really lucky kid, though I didn't know it at the time. Not lucky like privilege, you know. Like one of the other storytellers said. We weren't poor, but we were pretty close to it. Um, but I was lucky because I got to know six of my eight great-grandparents before they passed. We had a young family. Um, my mother had me when she, when she was 18 years old. Uh, her parents had her when they were 21. So we were very lucky. Uh, the, I got to know four of my great-grandmothers and two of my great-grandfathers. Uh, the last one passed when I was 19 years old. And every kitchen in our family was different. All ruled by women, of course. My mother's kitchen, she wanted things exactly the way she wanted them. Don't you get in there and add a little more sugar. Don't you get in there and put, move the flour around. Mm -mm. That was her kitchen. That was her kingdom. And she would cook it for you. And it would be delicious. And it would be just the way she wanted it. But she was not, but ironically, even though she was a teacher on her day job, she was not teaching us to cook at home. <laughs> I guess she'd had enough. Her mother grew up in the age of convenience food, TV dinners, post-war, you know, convenience, just add water, boil it, here's dinner. We don't tell her, but Grandma Margot can't really cook. But we still go there for Christmas Eve dinner. Oh, but the great-grandmas, though. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I would go to my great-grandma Margaret's house about every other weekend. Not because I had to, but because that was where I got to do whatever I wanted, within reason. <gasps> but her kitchen was an open place. And I remember every Saturday morning, we get up, and the first thing we do is put that griddle on the stove, drop a big old pat of butter in it, toss in a couple of sausages. Wait till you start to hear that crackly sound. You know, the you know, little fat starting to pop, sizzle. And I had this little foot, I was about half the height I am now. I had this little footstool I'd stand up on, and I'd be leaning over that pot, that pan. And when I started to sting my arms and my face, I knew it was time for the next bit. <laughs> then we'd crack a, couple, a few eggs in there and let it cook in the grease. Always uh, two slices of toast, always two, never one. And that was breakfast every morning. It was always the same thing. Uh, and that was the first thing I ever learned to cook. Second thing I ever learned to cook, though, was Grandma Margaret's key, key lime pie. To this day, I'm, I'm 34 years old. I have still never had a key lime pie that comes even close. Grandma had a, had a friend at the grocer, and she would go there. Every week she knew I was coming over, and she'd go in. It was the only place in town that carried actual key limes. 
You know, the little ones down from Florida. The regular lime wouldn't do. She would go and she would get those key limes, and they bought them just for her. And we'd make key lime, it's that silky key lime pie with the whipped cream on top. Some weeks we'd do pineapple upside down cake just to make things a little different. Dinner might be anything. It might be goulash. We were a Midwestern family. You know, it might be grilled pork chops with cherry sauce over the top of it. <laughs> and, but the thing that I remember clearest about the great grandma's houses was the holidays. You know, we were, we were a fairly big family and we were scattered all over the state. Um, from north to south, but everybody came together on Thanksgiving and on Christmas. Didn't matter that they were six weeks apart. They showed up for every single one. And that house was way too small for all of us, but we packed in there like sardines and we ate all goddamn day long. And everybody was there. And I didn't know how much I was gonna miss that later. I didn't appreciate it at the time. Like I said, when I was 19 years old, the last great-grandparent passed away. I was away at college when I got the call and I heard. And the chapter closed on our family. Now the uncles and the cousins, you know, they're in Michigan, Indiana, New York, North Carolina. We don't all get together on the holidays anymore. We don't have that matriarch to pull us all together back to home. So if there's one thing I gotta tell you right now, is treasure those elders while you got them. Make the trip, go see your family, eat yourself silly, and enjoy every second of it. I'll wrap this up with this one last little mention. I got in, started farming about eight, nine years ago. We were city kids. I didn't know, a, <laughs> I didn't know an earthworm from a roly poly. Uh, two years ago, my mother picked up gardening. She never stuck anything in the ground before, but now I get to teach her. And this year, she's about to finish building a new house with enough space for all of us to get together. And we're going to have holidays again. Beautiful. Let's hear it for Nathan Lewis.